Hi, I'm Ben White and I'm a registrar with intensive care in Rockhampton. Hello, my name's Daniel. I'm a senior registrar working at Rockhampton Hospital. Hi, my name's Rakeeb. I'm a second year junior doctor working at the Rockhampton Hospital. Um, I've just got onto the ICU training pathway in Queensland and next year I'll be working as an ICU registrar. For me, deciding to train in intensive care um, was a little bit by accident. I think it's a specialty that involved all the good things I liked about other specialties. So it had a, a broad range of presentation. It was quite diverse. I didn't want to be a, a one system specialist. Um, a, a lot of good acute presentations as well, which is really great. Um, and it relied massively on communication skills, which is something I was trying to work on as well. Uh, in uh, emergency situations where there was a bit of chaos. Uh, when I was a junior doctor it was nice to see the intensive care team um, come and make order from the chaos and so I think personally for me uh, that inspired me to, to head down that line. I think working in Rocky especially in, um, has been fantastic and I've, I've enjoyed every minute that I've, I've worked in the ICU here. For me Probably the thing that I love the most about it is, as a junior doctor, you, you get a lot of support, but you also get a lot of trust from your senior colleagues, from your registrars, from your consultants. Um, I think if you put your hand up, you show that you're interested and you're keen to learn and you want to work hard, um, they will they look after you, but also they give you a lot of uh, you know a lot of leeway to go and try and learn and do your best. And um, I think that's probably been one of the aspects I've loved the most about it. I think that when you're working with limited resources, you rely more on your clinical judgment. Um, and in regional areas, you gain that independence, and I think it does make you a better clinician. What I found is working in a rural centre in Rockhampton has been beneficial just because you get to do a lot more hands-on stuff as a junior doctor. Um, you're more towards the front line, you do a lot more procedural work, and I think you know, the experiences you gain um, is beyond what you can gain at this level. In a, in a tertiary centre. I think the bosses treat you, um, you, I guess you get to know them really well, so you get to work with the consultants directly, you get to know all the intensive care consultants, all the anaesthetists, all the ED specialists that, that you work with regularly. And I think that's probably one of the biggest uh, benefits as well, is that you get to know the people you work with and you get to build that trust and that relationship with them. And I think that puts you a, a step forward in your career from whenever you start. So for me, the benefits of working in regional Queensland has been an opportunity to be able to be involved in a, in a great team that's been able to provide quite individual and personalised medical care. Um, I've also liked the opportunity of being able to do a lot of things outside the hospital. Um, I have enjoyed going to the gym, picking up new sports, doing things like you know swimming, snorkeling, um, uh, going scuba diving over the weekend has been excellent. So I think I've had all that opportunities because I've been um, in a smaller regional area. Working regionally is also good, I think, from the, from the sense of, uh, of lifestyle and, and, and balancing work and life um, in general. I think not having to commute long distances, I think the, the culture amongst the hospital and the culture amongst, uh, among um, the doctors and the nurses that work here is also a lot more uh, pleasant. I think uh, people are a lot more relaxed and. Um, I think that also contributes to a, a greater environment to work in as well. Um, I'm lucky enough to have friends up here who, who have a boat, so we spend a lot of time um, out fishing, out at the Keppels, uh, doing a decent bit of camping as well. I think the biggest advice that I would have is if you know you want to train in intensive care, um, go and make an effort to get to know the people in the unit uh, that you work near or in the hospital that you work in. Go and speak to the senior doctors and get advice from people who have done it before you. It was a competitive process um, you had to go through an application and particularly for the Queensland pathway you also had to do a, an interview process um, so it does require a lot of preparation uh, but easily done. When I was in internship, I tried to make sure I went to as many med calls as I can to try and get that sort of experience. Um, I tried to see as many sick patients in ED that I could to try and get to know how ICU works or how the critical aspect of ED works. Um, and showing your face in those situations means that as you do you know, go throughout the year, 
um, the, the team in the intensive care unit and the, th the team in, in the critical side of ED uh, will get to know you and they'll trust you more and I think that sort of thing counts a lot on your references when you do go to apply. To become an intensivist, you'll need to apply for fellowship with the College of Intensive Care Medicine of Australia and New Zealand. Fellowship is a minimum six year full-time training pathway consisting of six months foundation training, 24 months core training, 12 months clinical medicine training, 12 months clinical anesthesia training, six months elective training, and 12 months transitional training. Entry requirements and prerequisites a general medical registration with the Medical Board of Australia, completion of PGY2, with the earliest year of entry is PGY3, registration or eligible to register with CICM after completion of six months in an accredited intensive care unit. In Queensland, the Queensland Intensive Care Training Pathway provides a centralised selection and allocation process for intensive care medicine trainees to accredited adult and paediatric intensive care units. Applicants must apply through the RMO campaign to secure an employment contract for a position within an accredited intensive care unit. Trainees will also need to register with CICM after completion of foundation training. So I'm a British trained doctor that initially came to Rockhampton for one year and I've stayed here for three years. Um, I've absolutely loved it. I've loved my time here and I think you will too. I think I've been incredibly lucky to work in Rockhampton and work in the intensive care unit here. Um, even through internship, doing some terms as a resident and then as a registrar as well. The support that we get is uh, incredible. Um, I think especially the consultants that work here, the way they support you to get onto a training program, they support you in your teaching and, and everything like that has been fantastic. And so it's something that I would recommend to anyone who's interested in intensive care. It's just try it to work rurally and especially in Rockhampton as well. Um, and I think it'll put you a one step ahead in, in, in trying to get onto the training program that you want to.